First of all, this shit was evil as fuck. Second of all, I'm gonna teach you all how to achieve this kind of sound so you'll be true evil and still very swag and also get some bitches so let's do the shit. Just as always, here we have regular ass double track. Two guitars, left and right rooted to guitars bus and that bus rooted to mix bus. Both of them shits has exactly same processing model, so we'll check out only one of them. First thing here is TSE 808 Screamer, which adds bit of drive and just a bit of brightness to the tone and prepare it for amplification stage. <laughs> We're gonna use bias for reamping and here comes some evil shits. Literally. Evil shits. Here's the settings. Notice that cab simulation module is disabled, cause we're going to use my custom made impulses and that shit makes some evil shits even more evil so in some it's all evil as fuck. Here it is. Key for impulse loader with impulse of cab mic'd up in cone edge position. You'll find info about download of this and other impulses at the end of this guide. Next step, multibin compressor C4. This thing compress some muddy bass to avoid this shit jumping out and fuck up all of my shit. Check this out. And the last thing here is NLS in Navo mode. This thing emulate preamp saturation of big ass console. Check this out. Now guitars goes to guitars bus so let's check that shit. First of all, EQ which cuts out some muddy lows. Second of all CLA 76. There is almost no any compression, but pretty big amount of saturation. Third of all, is a Top Ozone 5 Exciter. Gives us just a tiny bit of tape saturation and also reduce dynamic range just a bit. You can see that output level is compensated to equalize input and output RMS. Next EQ does pretty much the same that first did, because them shits was recovered by compressor and exciter, so we cut them out again. Notice that output level is dropped. Same thing with pretty much of EQs in this mix as additional gain stage between some of the plugins, so just keep that in mind. Next EQ clean up our shit by reducing some of them problem shits across the spectrum.
and the last thing in chain, compressor and side chain mode. This compressor is driven by kick, so it works only when kick hits, check this out. This way we add some breath to kick and guitars. This bus also has two sends, first of them emulates ambience of guitar room, because we use cab impulse which doesn't have any ambience response, so we're kind of fix it this way. That's how wet reverb sounds. Valhalla Room Reverb with Studio Alpha Preset which is some kind of little last room. Next thing, surround panner. I use this thing to reverse stereo image of reverb, so reverb from left guitars will be in right channel and right is in left, pretty common technique of cab room mix panning. Last thing, NLS. Notice that it stands in 7th insert, which is post fader. Output level of this channel is minus 30 decibels, so we don't have a lot of saturation here, the shit is not even move. Guitars bus also have sent to big reverb, which is main reverb for a whole ass mix, but we'll return to it later. We're gonna use Trillion for bass sampling, so let's look inside of it. Hardcore finger pause on this very much full range samples. All the FX is bypassed, cause we're gonna use external processing. Note that amp section is not really bypassed, but a very very low level, about minus 39 decibels. This way I add just a bit of low end to sound of pickups. Notice that output of Trillion is disabled because I need to split this tone to four different channels and in Cubase you can do it with output, but can do it with sends, so I created four FX channels and send same signal to each one of them. The thing is that every channel has its own processing and combination of all of them will give us fat and deep sound. That's how it rooted. Bass warm bass drive and bass crunch rooted to bass bus and that bus is rooted to mix bus, bus clean rooted straight to mix bus. Now let's check them shits. Bass warm. First of all, TSE 808 Screamer which drives tone a bit. Notice that tone parameter is at zero because even default setup of it provides a lot of harshness and unwanted highs, man I don't fuck with that shit. Next thing, bias. We're gonna use warm bass preset. This is kind of fire little bit check out burning shits on background. Here you can see the settings. Notice that cab simulation is bypassed too, but we'll return to this later. Bass drive. Probably main part of our bass. We're gonna use JST men ass here. As I already said in one of my previous guides, this thing works awesome when it comes to bass distortion. Here's the settings. Cab simulation is bypassed. We also have delay here to avoid phase shifts between channels. Each one of them have different processing, which means different delay time and that means that channels can be out of phase. So I fixed that shit and now they're okay. Bass crush. This shit is distorted as fuck. 
really heavy distortion here and I use bass crush per set on bias with a dude from PlayStation and axe crushing some shits with ass naked in the middle of snowy lake on background. Here is the settings. Cab section is bypassed. We also have this delay which fix phase delay on this channel. Now these three tracks goes to bass bus. First thing here, key fair loaded with my custom bass 4x12 cab impulse mic'd up in close cap position. So we have some of three different raw distorted tones combined in one and all of them goes through one cab. As I meant before, you'll find info about this and other impulses at the end of this guide. Next thing, EQ. This EQ cuts out very very low end, some muddy zones at the lows and low mids. Also cuts out some adrangy boxiness and resonate high mids and also high end fizz. Pro L limiter in all round mode. This thing reduce dynamic range of bass, make it more stable. Notice that output level is compensated, so input and output levels are equal. Is a top ozone 5 exciter in tape mode. As you can see, most saturation happens on highs, so we get tape saturation and also bring some brightness. Next EQ cuts out low and brought by previous exciter and also reduce problem zones at mids and highs. Next exciter focus lows and mids. And again EQ reduce problem zones at mids and highs. And finally an LS in Navo mode with pretty big amount of gain. We also have bass clean which goes in circumvention of bass some straight to mix bus. First thing here, EQ which cuts out boomy lows and clicky highs. SHB1 Extreme Bass Head by Ignite Amps. This amp tighten up the tone and give it little bit of drive. CLA 76 compressor with pretty big amount of compression to make sound bit fuller. Delay fix phase shits of this channel. Pro Q shapes the tone by dropping boxy mids and boost highs.
And the last plugin here is NLS in Navo mode. So we have combination of clean and driven tones. Speaking of sense, there is sent a bass room and to big reverb on booth channels. The thing is that bass clean has less amount of sent to room reverb, because in real life bass amp sounds much louder than strings by itself, so we're kind of have amp and guitarist in same room. Sad we don't have convolution bitches and swag to make our virtual guitarist more happy though. Speaking of bass room channel. There is Valhalla Room Reverb. Here is the settings. And at the very end of chain, NLS in Navo mode. Level of this room reverb is pretty low, minus 33 decibels, same as with Guitar Room. Output for this channel is Mix Bus, just like on Guitar's Bus Reverb. We are gonna use Superior Drummer Metal Foundry for drums sampling, so let's look inside of Sampler. Now I'll click on every drum so you can check out names of samples in this window. We are gonna process it externally, so there is no any processing inside of Superior. Now routing. We are use multi out mode, so every mic or group of mix will go to their own channels outside of superior. Kicks in and kick out goes to out 1 2 which is kick channel, all 4 snare mix goes to out 3 4 which is snare SD channel. Just quick note, SD main superior drummer and SSD main Steven Slate drums. Hi hat goes to out 7 8 which is hi hat channel. 3 rag toms goes to out 5 6 which is rag toms channel. 2 floor toms goes to out 9 10 which is floor toms channel. Booth of overheads channels goes to out 11 12 which is overheads channel. Am close goes to out 13 14 which is am close channel. Am far goes to out 15 16 which is am far channel. Am mono close goes to out 1920 which is am mono close channel and finally am mono far goes to out 1718 which is am mono far channel. Now check out bleed amounts for ambient and overheads microphones. You can notice that this drum kit has a lot of cymbals and toms and other shits, so I created my own drum map which has all of them different ass articulations. It contains all of them and was organized to make MIDI programming easy as fuck, so you can really dig in and create natural sounding drums. You'll find info about download of this at the end of guide. Now let's figure out routing outside of Superior. Kick rooted to drums bus. Snare SD and Snare SSD which we'll talk about bit later are rooted to snare some bus and this bus rooted to drums bus. Rag toms floor toms hi-hat and overheads rooted to drums bus. For ambience channels rooted to ambience bus and this bus is rooted to drums bus. Let's go for processing of them shits and we'll start from kick. First thing here is an EQ with pretty wide tone shape at highs and dropped mids. 
high shelf filter smoothly boosts mids and highs and other bell filters clean up problem zones caused by this boost. We also have low cut filter here to filter unwanted low end. SSL compressor focus attack of kick and make sound bit fuller. Next EQ reduce lows and clean up problem zones plus we have little boost on highs. Another EQ clean up the tone bit more. And finally an LS in Navo mode. Speaking of sends, there is automatized send to big reverb, which open up in some parts of the song. Another one is sidechain send to compressor on guitars bus which we talked about earlier. Snare channel. Just like on kick, here we have wide shape on lows and highs with couple of bell filters which clean up tone a bit. Next thing, pair of SSL compressors. Both of them has exactly same settings. This way I focus tight snare attack and also make body bit fuller with short release. Each compressor have about 4 decibels of gain reduction. So technically there is about 9 decibels of total gain reduction, but if apply so deep compression by only one compressor, you'll get much less transparent results. Envelope shaper defeats unwanted ring and sustain, so sound of snare is more tight with this thing. Next EQ clean up ringy mids and harsh highs. Last plugin and chain is NLS in Navo mode. Those of you who ever use Metal Foundry knows how ringy these snares are, so I used Black Beauty snare from Steven Slate Drums for as a trigger. Here is the settings. The only processing here is SSL compressor. Attack time is 30 milliseconds so we put in the snare more body than compressors from another snare does, 
so we get more body and more sustain. After this processing SSD snare goes to snare some bus and here we have just one EQ with high cut filter and some drops on rainy zones. Speaking of sends we have sent to snare parallel compression from snare SD channel. CLA 76 works in all mode with fast attack and short release. Pretty big amount of compression and saturation which blends to original snare and make it cuts and mix. Next plugin is an EQ, which reduce ringy body of snare and cut out harshy highs. Last plugin and chain, NLS. This channel is also rooted to snare some bus. Speaking of some bus, there is sent to big reverb from here, which was automatized to open up and slow parts of song. Rag toms. Here we have simple EQ which cuts out rainy body of toms. Rag toms sounds already pretty clear. So we don't need much EQ. Last thing in chain, NLS. And we also have sent to big reverb. Floor toms. Bit wider drop on same rainy zone at mids and little focus on highs. NLS at the end of chain. Again send to big reverb. Hi hat channel. Here we have simple EQ with low cut filter to get rid of unwanted lows. Notice that level of hi-hat is low as fuck, because we already have a lot of bleed of it from overhead's channel.
Overheads Channel. First of all, EQ which cut out unwanted lows and boost highs. CLA 76 with bit of compression to add some sustain. Next EQ is used for gain stage and drops level to minus 3, 4 decibels. You can use any gain plugin for this. Last in chain, NLS. Send to Big Reverb, which was automatized to work in specific parts of song. Ambience. These three ambience channels doesn't have any processing on it and goes straight to ambience bus. And mono close channel, first plugin and chain is envelope shaper which reduce sustain and focus attack of snare. Because of the fact that we use really heavy compression on ambience bus, this channel don't give actual attack, it will be squashed anyway, but it adds interesting character of room. Next plugin, EQ. Two notch filters at mids to reduce ringy frequencies and high cut filter to clean up highs. And last plugin and chain, NLS. And we also have sent to Big Reverb. Now all of them AM channels goes to Ambience Bus. First thing here, CLA 76 compressor in all mode to uncover character of room. Next plugin, EQ with low cut filter. Next EQ cut out midrangey resonate zone and clean up highs with high cut filter. And another EQ cuts out mids bit more. Notice that output level is plus 0.5 dB. Last plugin and chain, NLS. Now let's go for processing of drums bus. First thing here is CLA 76 with tiny bit of compression.
works mostly on snare hits and glue it with other elements of drum kit. Isotope Ozone 5 Exciter provides tight tape saturation. Notice that output level is compensated to equalize input and output RMS. Kramer tape provides tape saturation too, but make it more smooth way and adds bit of tape flutter, which makes sound more warm and glue it up a bit. And finally last plugin and chain, SSL compressor, which adds some punch and glues drums together even more. After all of this, drums bus goes to mix bus. As you could note earlier, we have sends to big reverb channel from every single channel or group of channels. This way we control space image of mix and create feel of natural ambience. To talk short, the further instrument stands from listener, the more reverb it will have. That's why each sends level is different. That's how this reverb channel sounds. And here is settings of reverb. After reverb we have EQ which clean up low end and avoid us of frequency conflicts. After all of these, this channel goes to mix bus. And now before we'll finally go to master processing. Take a look at them levels and pan settings shits one more time. All master processing happens on two buses. First one is mix bus and second one is master bus, because I don't have enough slots in first one. So signal flows through mix bus, goes to master bus and from here it goes to stereo out, some kind of that. So let's do the shit. Okay first of all, NLS bus, as I already said in previous guides, this thing is emulation of analog summing of analog mixing console to get warm analog swag and bitches and also controller for all of them NLS shits in the mix. So now I will turn off all of them and you'll hear how much those things does. Next thing, SSL compressor which works in very loud snare hits and specific parts of songs. You can see that shit is not even move but it upper the volume. Next plugin is Isotope Ozone 5 Equalizer with matching option. Quick note, we'll use double matching in this master, so first one is just subtle tone correction which will give us just a bit of tone shaping for more accurate processing. You will find these matching sessions in additional files to this guide too. You can notice that this curve is pretty gentle but one place, here on 16 kHz, 
and next EQ fix this unwanted boost. It also cut out unwanted low end, because NLS produce pretty much of low end harmonics which you can't even hear, so we slightly get rid of them and make rest of processing more accurate. Next plugin is a major. This thing fixed stereo field after applying EQ matching. As you can remember we had dropped mids and boosted highs, which provided unwanted stereo field changes, so this way we recover stereo width of mids and reduce stereo of highs. Next thing, is a Top Ozone 5 Exciter and Tape Mode. This thing will give us bit of compression and saturation. You can notice that output is dropped to minus 2.8 decibels and the smooth compensates input and output RMS levels, check this out. Also notice that amount of saturation on high band is slightly less than others to avoid too harsh highs. And finally main EQ matching which acts more noticeable than previous one, check this out. This thing does main job in tone correction and you can hear how clean and transparent sound become. You'll find the session at the attachment too. So let's move on. In major again. This time we fix unwanted low end provided by EQ matching and do regular stereo enhancement on mids and highs. Next EQ has only smooth high cut filter from 12 kHz. Not a big difference, but it makes highs bit smoother and transparent. Many audio engineers do the same thing to achieve vintage kind of sound, but in our case it doesn't make so much difference. Next plugin is Multibin Compressor. As you can see, Spectre has been splitted in two bands. First one give us control on lows and provide kick drum jumping out plus it reducts lows while kick hits too fast. Higher one works mostly on snare and kick transients and reduce their attacks. So generally this thing smoothen up the tone a bit so we gonna be smooth as fuck and still very evil. Finally EQ delete all side information below 80 Hz. Because of the fact that our guitar's in standard E tuning, we don't need anything that sounds lower than key note here. This way we reduce stereo mud on lows.
focus base on center and get some additional headroom which allows us to get little bit higher compression on limiter. Finally Pro L limiter, transparent mode allows us to get much compression which will be unnoticeable. Another modes like punch or all round might be much more noticeable, but not this one. As you can see compression happens mostly on kick and snare hits and that's why levels of it could look like too high before this limiter. That's how we do the shit. For those of you who want to get additional files pack for this guide, which include Cubase project, impulse pack for bass and guitars, matching session for Isotope Ozone 5, pack of Pro Q presets used in this guide, custom drum map and superior drummer preset, you'll find all of them shits in my private post on Patreon, which will available after pledging $1. By doing this you also get access for rest of my private content and support my ass up and help me do what I do. Link is in the description. Hope you all learned thing or two from this guide. See you next time.